One ton of rugby you're looking at there. B to Braun, Mustard. Elkinston on the attack. Giving off, now we get in the first in the cross, only been on a try, the first try of the match. For one of Britain's most illustrious rugby league clubs, the game is almost up. Hull Kingston Rovers are a million pounds in debt and threatened with closure. But they've won extra time by calling in company doctor Edward Klemke. So I'm administrator of Hulk Easter Rovers Football Club. Bloody hell, fire off, shan't got this job. <laughs> For the club, the players and the fans, Klemka is the last hope. Unless he stages a comeback this season, Hull Kingston Rovers could close forever. Do you watch much rugby, David? I don't, Edward, no, actually. It's not a game that I've ever really followed. Well, I do, I quite enjoy it. Edward Klempke and his assistant, yeah. David Thornhill, specialise in saving failing companies. It's January the 13th, and Klempke was put in charge of Hull Kingston Rovers just three hours ago. That's our stadium. That's ours, yeah. Since Rovers' heyday in the 80s, they have lost the winning streak and many of the fans have stayed at home. With the club deeper and deeper in debt, the directors have been forced to call in Klemke. Hi there, lads. It's uh, nice to see you. Uh, for my sins, I'm the administrator of Hull Kingston Rovers. And what that means is that we actually, in the simplest language, we are actually managing the club whilst we find a solution to the current problems. We owe about a million pounds, and we haven't got a million pounds to pay. That's the problem. And what the administration does, it actually freezes the million pounds, so no one can come and close the club down, um, take away the, the, the assets and what have you. And it gives us that breathing space to find some sort of solution. The other alternative would have been liquidation. If we'd have liquidated, we'd have probably had, had an office block of Craven Park, something like that. Okay, Jens, thanks very much. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Thanks very much. I think a lot of people knew that the club was in um, financial difficulties, but not to that extent. Um, if if the club were to fall, I think you know, a lot of us would not only lose a living, but you'd lose part of the, the city's heritage in Oak Kingston Rovers. If we don't play fair with the players, we might as well all go home now. As administrator, Klemke is employed by the club to try to keep Rovers going while paying off enough of the debts to satisfy the creditors. Well, I've been a rugby fan uh, since I was a lad and uh, the thought of running Hull Kingston Rovers is almost like for a football fan running Manchester United. But this is no Manchester United. Rovers is an old-fashioned rugby club with part-time players who train after work. Now the whole world of rugby league is being turned upside down. Two years ago, Sky Television moved in. There's now a big money Super League with expensive players and big sponsorship. For the other clubs, it's a struggle to survive. Super League, you know, is, um, is big business, no question about it. Clubs have changed their names to trendy titles. You know, it really has uh, had a major impact on the sport. The kids love it. And at the same time, we seem to have had lots of casualties. Whilst everybody's heard of Hull Kingston Rovers, the fact is we're in the first division and not in Super League. Day two, and at his Leeds headquarters, Klepka calculates his position. What are the trading losses in recent years, David? Yeah. He decides he'll need to find a wealthy buyer. 
But in the meantime, to keep the club alive, he'll have to make Rovers profitable. 123 so in a round year figures, in May 96. We're actually losing about 200 grand a year in round figures. I mean, in reality, it's going to be quite hard to sell this, isn't it? I mean, uh, how, the demand for a rugby pitch in Hull can't be that high. To make a profit, Klempke needs to get more fans through the turnstiles. 1,600 six, average gate last year, if we could get up to a 2,000 average gate, you know, that, that automatically means there's more, there's more revenue in. It makes our chances of, of trading it successfully and, and the options that we've got as administrators greater. Mm. Rovers have got tough competition to win fans. How small is the support over there? Well, judging by the crowds, not that strong, because you've got a, you've got a city that's basically divided by the River Hull north-south and to the west of that river is Hull FC and to the east of the river is Hull KR and, it, and it's as strong as that, it's a bit like Liverpool with Liverpool and Everton or Manchester with United and City. You know the twain shall meet. Yeah, absolutely. Rovers arch rivals, Hull FC, known as the Black and Whites, have also fallen on hard times. Once the best supported teams in the land, the two deadly opponents are having a tough time battling for spectators. It's the end of January, Rovers' first match and the first test for the administrators. Every fan means an average of seven pounds for the coffers, and the more they eat and drink, the better. Not too bad at all, thanks. I've just been discussing with these gentlemen the takings and uh, showed them that the money's safe. <laughs> Well, you don't know whether or not you're going to be here tomorrow, whether they're going to sell it to somebody, whether the tax man's going to shut us. You just don't know from one day to the next. We read in the paper the same as everybody else does. We come back the next morning to work and wonder whether the doors are going to be shut or not. You know, I was in a church this morning in East Hull, and uh, I was amazed because somebody else was doing the uh, intercessions, the prayers. And they prayed for all kings and rovers. And I was really pleased. So there's prayers going in all over East Hull. It's marvellous. Not in West Hull, in East Hull. <laughs> Other rovers. Well, yeah, it's all yeah, life, isn't it? It's all life, isn't it? I've been coming 65 years. I don't want to be shut down that no. way. No. Well, we don't survive, well. We won't go across the town to watch the other side. Definitely not. No, we're red and white, aren't we? Red and white, definitely. <laughs> matches not only brings in more fans but there's a cash bonus from the rugby league depending on where they finish the first match is a cup game against an amateur team and this time Rovers pick up an easy win One thousand three hundred and sixty-eight people came, and we took their money off them. So uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Perhaps we've broken even. It's February, and while Klempka struggles to make a profit, former rugby player Tim Wilby has big ambitions and thinks Rovers could fit in with them. The thing is that we've got a new generation supporter coming through now. The old diehards getting older and they die off. What's happening now is there's a new generation of supporters coming through who they want to watch and support a top quality side. Super League, Rugby League, that's what people want to watch now and nothing else. The lower divisions unfortunately they're falling by the wayside and probably in five, six years they'll be extinct. So we want to make sure that Hull are part and parcel of that Super League. That's where all the revenue is going to be, that's where all the TV coverage is, the marketing, the promotions and everything. It's all going to be done that way. Once a star player for Rovers' bitter rivals, Hull FC, Wilby is now a London property speculator. He thinks it's time to invest in rugby, and he's looking to Rovers to make his next fortune. 
Wilby puts in an offer to Klempka's colleague, David Thornhill. Are you able to give me a, a, an indication of what, what it is that you're going to come to us with? We're looking at about 250. Sorry, do you want a response to that? <laughs> I think you've given it, haven't you? <laughs> The administrators reckon rovers are worth at least half a million, double the offer. I'm only, I'm only the oil rag, but um, I'm pretty sure that if I discuss that with Edmund Klemka, he's, he's going to, well, he's going to suggest, if, if, if we start a meeting on that tack um, and your first sentence is an offer at that sort of level, um, I'm pretty sure that Edward's uh, first comment is going to be, well, should we, go, should we go and have a beer? With just one small offer on the table, the club is hit by a major setback. The main sponsor pulls out, leaving just a few hundred pounds from a local stationery firm. And their sign's been put upside down. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure not everybody would notice it, but I'm sure he will. <laughs> he's, right. he's the guy who's paying the money at the end of the day. Right. So if we can, uh, if we just flip the thing around. Right, yeah. yeah. For Rover's commercial manager, desperate for cash, it's a disaster. We've just taken down the last remaining signage. That was up. There was some signage up on the far side on the stand there. That came down the other week, and obviously we've deleted the name from the jersey. So obviously there's no contribution coming from that company anymore. Um, so at the moment, the players in the last couple of weeks have been playing with no sponsor on the shirt. Well, the sponsors pulling hasn't been right good for us. So. I mean, it's 20,000 a year. Whilst it doesn't sound an awful lot of money, um, it is a serious blow, yo. Yeah. No question about it. Next day, though, there's better news. Potential purchaser Tim Wilby comes north to negotiate in person. Um, I know the city of Hull quite well because I did about eight seasons playing there. Oh, but it being for the other side. Well, the black and white. The black and white, <laughs> yeah. But I, I know the public of Hull, they're very fanatical. And the old situation where bums on seats pays the wages. Wilby has raised his offer to £350,000, but this still falls far short of paying off the million pound debt. If, if somebody comes along like ourselves um, and offers 35, 40 quid a pound, at least they're going to get something. But, you know, the price that you're offering is really hurting. Um, you know, you're going to have to sharpen that pencil and uh, come up with something. I wasn't that surprised at the size of the, uh, uh, of the offer. I don't know about you, David. No, it went, it's gone up 100,000 since yesterday. <laughs> so if we can keep that going for a week, we might be we're OK. <laughs> I think, uh, realistically, if we can get about half a million, um, we'll have done a good job. Meanwhile, down at the dockside, star player Rob Darcy is at his day job. Many of the players are creditors, still owed money for last season. A few players may have owed a couple of thousand pounds here and there, a thousand pounds, that type of thing. Back money that had been owed for a long while. Um, obviously, the club hasn't been able to pay the money, and it's kept. It's, you know, it's been an ongoing process of. Uh, you know, it'll be next week. It'll be next week. And now it's coming under administration. You know, these players are obviously very upset. Um, and wondering how they're going to get paid and what they're owed. Darcy and two other star players ask their agent to enter the scrum. A couple of my clients are owed money. I think they've been told that they won't get the money unless um, they sign contracts, so we may be held to ransom on that. But uh, only time will tell, and we'll know later this afternoon what's going to happen. Oh. Gentlemen, have a seat. Under tight new contracts, the players' wages will depend on match results and how well the team does in the league. The administrators threaten to only give back pay to players who sign up to their new deal. It feels like David against Goliath. <laughs> you lot on one side and me on the other. As you will appreciate, coming from a top company like Coopers and Liveband, these lads can't get uh, mortgages, etc. You know, if they don't have guaranteed money. I'm not offering any guaranteed money. So you're asking someone who's played, who's scored 23 tries in 22 games, that he's not worth anything? 